And we are live. What's good, man? It's, it's your man, DL Saint. Yo, how y'all feeling? Happy Thursday, man. We're making it happen. Um, this is the DL Saint I Really Want to Know podcast. Uh, we are here trying to make things happen, y'all. Shoot, you know what I mean? Yeah, let me give myself a little bit of an applause. You know what I mean? Because uh, we're trying to make it happen. Um, sorry about the scheduling thing. I know I be putting thumbnails out. Normally, y'all know I just jump on. It's just like whatever, whatever. Um, but this time I did put a thumbnail out. I had to change the time a couple times um, because we're dealing with international uh, uh, folks here. You know what I mean? We ain't just local, y'all. We we international, and I can have. Uh, I am honored to have one of my one of my homeboys, like one of my aces, like this cat right here. This dude really taught me how to travel. You know what I mean? This man done had me out a little bit of everywhere, and we both come from the same hood. We both made it out. Uh, has become very successful. I'm not as successful as he is, but I am very successful in my own right. And that's one of those things like you have to, the people in your crew, you know, at least have to be on your level, if not better, because they're going to keep you pushing forward and striving to be the absolute best you can. So, um, so without further ado, let me bring him up. And this is my man, the myth, the legend himself, Perry Davis Jr. Esquire. What's going on, brother? <laughs> How you feeling? Hey, I'm doing good. How you feeling today? Oh man, I'm doing all right. I can't complain. I can't complain at all, man. I'm just I'm excited to get going. I'm excited about the uh the topic, man, because we love to travel. You're very worldly. I'm very worldly. And um, you know, it's I can't wait to get into the topic. But before we do, because you've only been on the show once, and uh before we do, um Please take a moment and uh, tell everybody who you are. Give them a quick, like, one-minute elevator pitch, man, and and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, like you said, my name is Perry Davis, Jr. I'm an attorney in Cincinnati, Ohio. I have been traveling internationally for about 24 years now. And presently, I'm in Medellin, Colombia, as we speak, so that's one of the reasons we had to change some times around. I just got off the plane a couple hours ago. So, like, I'm stationed in Cincinnati, but, you know, you may catch me anywhere on the weekends. Ain't, ain't that the truth anywhere and everywhere <laughs> so uh and i'm curious man just before we get going what are some of the places you've been and i, I mean i know the answer but i'm just you know i want to hear from you uh let me see i've been to medellin obviously for about the last 10 to 12 years curacao aruba panama rio de janeiro Cannes, france nice france Monte Carlo, uh, you know, the usual, the Dominicans. Um, what about to the east? Have you, you haven't really gotten to the far east that much. No, I haven't done that. Actually, I was just looking at that last week and I was trying to figure out my schedule to figure out when I can get to uh, Thailand. So that's next on my list. Yeah, I'm trying to hit the Philippines first, then mm -hmm. Thailand. Actually, if I do it, it'll be in the same trip. Like I'll go to the Philippines and then move on over to Thailand or whatever. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, pop back into Japan. Cause you know, I've been to South Korea, Japan, China. Um, I, I'm more of a far East kind of guy because just the history and stuff like that. But right. uh, I haven't been with you and I want to go there with you. <laughs> I need to do that. I'm trying to make it happen, but it's hard for me to get two weeks off my job. You know how that is. Yeah, it ain't your job, it's your life, bro. You built that. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to say, well, I got a job. Like, now nah, he is the man, y'all. Don't think for a second he ain't working for himself. <laughs> At a law firm. I'm doing my thing. Doing your thing. And just so people, are, if they're curious, like, what type of law do you practice, brother? I do personal injury, divorce, medical malpractice. I do a lot of sports and entertainment. Uh, well, you know, I, you know, I did the Renee and Angela, Drew Hill. I've done a bunch of, you know, Michael Jackson projects, J-Lo projects. Uh, Bruce Wadeen was the number one engineer, and he was my client for 25 years. So we've done a lot of projects together. That's what's up, y'all. And I'm trying to build it up so I can get on that list. I want to be on, I want to be, uh, on his client list as well. So I'm, I'm starting here. We'll start with YouTube. Get you know, and build up my entertainment presence as well. And like start getting on, uh, getting on stage, and uh, you know, have my man go in there and negotiate for me because Perry's a beast. He's gonna get the bag, y'all. He gonna get the bag. Trust me. <laughs> Because I got to get paid. Exactly. <laughs> That's who you want. You know what I mean? Uh, Brother Michael, what's good? Welcome to the show, man. Thanks for all the support, man. I saw you coming over to Suzette Speaks, showing love, man, uh, breaking off uh, a little support for her as well. So thanks, bro. I really do appreciate that, man. Like I said, on her show, um, 
I love helping out. I love mentoring. I love uh, getting out there and helping push dudes, uh, especially uh, cats that are in my, in, in, in my circle, in my orbit. You one of them. You know what I mean? But you, Money Mike, and uh, my, my cats out in Dallas, that's it. Everybody else got to pay. It's like a kid now, man. TikTok, the game is locked. If you want Uncle Saint to come roll with you, we're gonna, that's going behind the paywall. But never for you, Brother Michael. You never gonna have to pay, man. You my dog, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a day one cat, day one cat. But everybody else, y'all gonna have to dig deep. <laughs> everybody else, and trust me, y'all gonna want to do the same thing with this man over here. But boy, his ticket is way up there. If you don't get some time with Perry, it's gonna cost you some bread. You know what I mean? But it's money well spent. You cannot better yourself without investing in yourself. And investing in yourself means uh, doing what you gotta do to uh, to get coaching. To get, you know, to get mentors, to get coaching, you know what? Sometimes you got to pay for that. But the the investment comes back tenfold. You know what I mean? So you young brothers out there, young men and even old men out there, you know what I mean? Can't seem to figure out, keep bumping your head up against that glass ceiling. This is how you can get around that. Because everybody has a coach. The greatest had coaches. LeBron has a coach. Jordan had coaches. You know what I mean? Tiger had coaches. Everybody got, the, everybody got coaches. You can't get better without someone on the technical side, showing you how to get there. Would you agree with that, Perry, or no? Oh, without a doubt. There's no question about it. No question. Oh. So today's topic, man, we're talking about traveling. In particular, we're going to be talking about Medellin. I, I'll, I have a lot of people coming to me, a lot of brothers in particular, coming to me talking about Colombia, Medellin, Bogota, you know what I mean, Cartagena. They're asking me about this, and they always say the, f the first thing out of their mouth is, but it's dangerous. It's <laughs> dangerous. Oh, you don't want to go to Colombia. It's dangerous. It's dangerous for those people who make dumb mistakes. But if you know what you're doing, <laughs> like there's no danger in it whatsoever. Yeah, I would agree with that. I've been coming here 12 years. And I've never had one problem. But I've watched many people make many mistakes, and those mistakes can lead to problems. It's like any other city. You have to know what you're doing and how to travel and handle yourself. And the problem that a lot of people have when they come to countries like this, this is not America. And the way if you're acting a fool in America, don't act a fool in somebody else's country. You don't know the rules, you don't know the law, and you don't know the people. So as long as you take take care of yourself, you'll be fine. Colombia's fine. I never had any problems in 12 years. Never. And I'm here to vouch for that, too. I've been going down there um, shit, with Perry. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I've never had any issues to any country I've been to from, from Tokyo to Seoul to 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 Frankfurt, Germany, you know what I mean? To to Liverpool, I've never had any issues, right? Because it's it's the, you have to know how to move. If you guys don't know that old saying: "When in Rome, do as the Romans." You got to move like that. I don't care what hood you from in in America. I don't care how gangster you may be or how how you know rich you may be or whatever. How privileged you may be, you have to know where you are. Be constantly aware of your surroundings. And move accordingly. You can't be in some foreign country wearing a five hundred thousand dollar necklace. Great. Yeah, I, can, I mean, it's just crazy. You know, you, and especially in Colombia, you got to understand that you're talking about a country where the minimum wage is less than a dollar, but the average person working is making three hundred dollars a month. So you come over here with a thousand dollar iPhone hanging out your pocket, well, you might have a problem. You come over here, and, you know, with a five thousand dollar chain on. That's somebody's whole life's income for a year. Uh, you got to realize how, where you are and how to roll. And a lot of people don't understand that. This is not America, so don't act like it's America. Right. And then, you know, and the perfect example of that, and I try to tell folks, and I even did an episode on it. You look at what happened with Brittany uh, Griner, 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 mm -hmm. right? What was she doing? She's over there moving like an American. Well, you know, I got a doctor's note from America saying that I should be smoking weed. Okay, that's, that's well and good in the 50 states but it's russia not, ain't trying to hear that <laughs> they ain't trying to hear that it's not a, and, and people think that it, it's funny because sometimes people come over and think american law rules another country i had a, a friend of mine he got his phone stolen he said uh and then he called me up to my can i will american embassy help me get my phone I was like, are you nuts i mean people just <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? You just lost your phone. That's how it goes. <laughs> Will the American embassy help me get my phone? I thought he was crazy. You know, and he was serious. As a heart attack. <laughs> As a heart 
He called his he called his girl back home and asked her could she get the number to the embassy. I said, "Are you nuts?" <laughs> that is hilarious. I would have told him like, "Give it a try. Let me know what happened." <laughs> be sitting back like this, wait for that call. In America, when he called me, he was here by himself. I said, "What? <laughs> Should you call me in America to see if the embassy can get your phone? Are you nuts? You know, they wouldn't even come get you." <laughs> right. Right. As Brittany, right. <laughs> you know what I mean. As to half a million or so, I'm just making up a number, but there's so many Americans who are locked up abroad who are actually pawns in some sort of political scheme. Ask them. Or there are people out there who are outright guilty. And they found themselves in a, in a foreign prison. And they're like, well, in America, I would only get a probation. Well, you know, over here in Bali, you just got 16 years. That's just what, that's how it works. That's how it works. You know, it's a different law. It's not America. This is not America. So, all right. So, the reason for this particular video for uh, for this particular episode, yeah, I was, I was, uh, uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, Suzette speaks. It hit me up on on Instagram, and she sent me a video, and she say, "Hey, man, you, you know Tobias, the traveler, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, he's been on your show, right?" I don't know him personally, but he's been on your show. She's like, "Yeah, look at this video he posted." So I looked at it, and um, the video is. Uh, Columbia got drugged and robbed in Medellin, Colombia. So he's like, I got drugged and robbed in Medellin, Colombia, and he made a video about it. And I sent it. I immediately sent it to Perry. <laughs> I was like, P, you gotta look at this, bro. Tell me what you think. And uh, he sent it to me. And I mean, he didn't watch the whole video. It didn't seem he's hitting me up already. Like, bro, bro. <laughs> like, do you know this guy? Like, I don't. I don't know him personally. Uh, you know, I, I almost. You know, we're in the YouTube streets. He was like, bro. I'm like, hey, man. We got to react to this video. Can we do it? And he was like, yeah, we could do it. As a matter of fact, I'll be in Medellin. <laughs> I'm like, bet. So, so I'm going to pull it up, guys. Um, and again, shout out to Tobias. I think he's still traveling. I want to say he is in the UK right now. I think he went from, I think he started in Bali. I was just, just based on what his, what his page is doing. He started in Bali. He was in, went to Columbia. I think, I think next is the UK. So uh, safe travels to you, brother. I hope. Uh, the rest of your trip goes without incident. Um, but we're just going to play a little bit of, uh, of this video, guys. And uh, I know we probably don't have too many um, people watching right now because I was playing around with the times, but definitely catch the replay. But all right, here we're going to watch a little bit of this, y'all. Check this out. Hello, hello, world. This is Tobias the Traveler back again with another video. Today, we're going to talk about how I was drugged and robbed in Medellin, Colombia. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna stop it a lot doing this uh doing this episode, but right away, people are looking at his room and they're looking at that view. And you guys are thinking, like, man, he must be balling, bro. Look at that room, look at that view. Right? Perry, how much would you guess that room cost him? Uh I'm assuming from where he's at that probably you can get that for maybe a hundred hundred and a half two hundred at the most uh and that's pushing it it depends on who he knows and who who he hit up for it you know you can you can get that on in, in a car space like cartagena you can get you a penthouse for 150 a night so it, it just depends on where he's at yeah now he's he's in medellin and he is right. i want to say he's in poblado so um i've i remember one of the last times i was in uh medellin I was at Hotel Diaz, and I think I was paying fifty dollars a night. Oh yeah, I'm pay I'm in uh, Dan Carlton right now, which I guess is one of the top two or three here, and I'm paying seventy. Seventy dollars a night at one of the top hotels in the area. First of all, people, whenever you travel, the first thing you need to be thinking about, the first and last thing you need to be thinking about, is security. Mm -hmm. You want to stay in a place that's secure. Bottom line. I don't care. You looking at stuff, and you want to say someplace secure, right? Because that's only going to benefit you in the long run, and it's going to benefit like if you meet someone, she's not going to want to come back to your place if it, if you somewhere that looks good on the inside, but outside it looks dangerous. Mind you, that's where she's from. She might be like, "You where? Nah, I don't want to go over there." <laughs> like, oh, or if and, she, and oh, go ahead. Or where you're comfortable? I mean, I was talking to some guys from Miami. They called me yesterday. And they stay in the hood. And I'm like, why are you, who travels to another country to stay in their hood? I said, you lost your mind? Well, yeah, it's cheap down there. Yeah, it is cheap down there. And so is your life. I said, but there, yeah. it's a man 
what people do when they go to countries. And then they say, well, I got robbed. Well, you in the hood, you're going to get robbed in the hood in, in New York if you act a fool. That's just how you're going to get robbed in the hood in Fayetteville, North Carolina. You're going to get robbed in the hood in Memphis, Tennessee. If you're right. in the hood. Right. That's what happens. So and who goes who? I, me personally, why would I travel 3,000 miles to go to the hood? <laughs> that don't make any sense to me. None whatsoever. But we're going to continue. I just wanted to point out that view because he, he references the view at some point in the video. And that is a beautiful view. But in America, you will be paying well north of five hundred dollars a night for a view like that in a major city you know what i mean easy mm -hmm. easy whenever i go to miami i'm at the w right. and if i can get into the w for four hundred dollars a night in in brickle because i like you know that's my favorite used to be the viceroy shout out to y'all if i can get in there for four hundred dollars a night i'm jumping up and down that's a deal if there's something going on in miami it's easily twenty five hundred dollars a night to w right just a comparison so let's continue this uh, was something else, right? This was very, very scary. This is real. This is not fictional. Uh, I didn't just happen to make this up. But first, you see that view? Like, you see that view right there? Look. See what I'm saying? He brought the view up right away. And it's beautiful. <laughs> you can see that, you know, the nice guy and all that. I've uh, you know, met him behind me. But enough of that. Okay, we're going to talk about how I was drugged in Colombia, how I live to tell about it. I'm so thankful that was all that happened. I you know, woke up kind of drowsy, like really had, had a really, really bad mood, but let's just get right into it. Drugged and robbed. So it all started on Tinder. Perry. <laughs> 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 well, that's mistake number one. Colombia, Medellin has probably probably three million people, probably two million beautiful women. What are you doing on Tinder? <laughs> he could walk down the street and find a team. I, I was with a friend. I ain't gonna mention his name. He, I had to get him out of McDonald's because he couldn't believe how pretty the girl were. So, what are you doing on Tinder? I give you a hint as to who he's talking about. <laughs> So what are you doing on Tinder? You can find women in Medellin as quickly as you can find a, a roach in a ghetto. I mean, come on, man. What? <laughs> it's like they say, you can't throw a rock and not hit a beautiful woman in Medellin. There's so many of them. There's so many of them. And, and since Perry brought it up, all right, hold on, hold on. Everybody sit down, sit down, please. It's story time. It's story time. So, story time, boys and girls. Please sit Indian style. Mike, quit messing with everybody and be quiet and listen to this story. Perry got me in Medellin. We just got off the plane. We're we're over in like the close to the Legere's Park. Where we where we go to El Dorado Mall? Santa Fe Mall. Santa Fe Mall. Perry takes me in there. First of all, the, the mall was beautiful. Beautiful mall. We're walking around here. Like, I'm like, damn. I'm looking at it like, hey man, is that a retractable roof? Like this thing is, is just ridiculous, this mall. We're walking around. And Perry's telling me the do's and don'ts <laughs> of traveling to Medellin. Like, yo, 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 D, I know you know how to travel, but this is, you know, this is what we're doing. This is what's going on. This is our plan. We're going to be doing this. And, and then at one moment, he realizes he's talking to himself. I'm, our, I'm back at McDonald's, got my feet dangling out the window, trying to holler at the girl back there making uh, ice cream sundaes. And I don't speak a lick of Spanish. <laughs> like Perry, Perry had to come grab me by my collar. Like, boy, if you don't bring your ass... <laughs> but it just goes to show how fine. The last thing I will be thinking about is getting online and trying to find women walking around Medellin. Right. I mean, it's, it's that it, to me is unbelievable. It's either that or he doesn't really go to Medellin a lot. Because I've got at least four thousand friends here. He could have called me. <laughs> yes. And Tobias, you know, what I mean, and, and again, this is a no shade towards Tobias or nothing like that. We're just right. using this as a training tool, an educational tool. Um, brother, if you ever go back and I'm talking to you, Tobias, if you ever go back to Medellin, please holler at me. Please holler at me. You know what I mean? I'll put you in touch with Perry and uh, we can make sure you got a good team around you. So this sort of thing doesn't happen. So. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, bro. I mean, it, it's, it's just one of those. Yeah, I, I was just kind of like, what the hell? And um, I'm trying to, sorry about chat. Sorry about that, y'all. I'm trying to, here we go. I want to go check to see if we got any chats. 
And we got wonderful 34 in the house. What's good? What's good, fam? What up, people? And we're here and we got a uh, shout out to DL Saint. Thanks for that, Bruno. Brother Mike showing love. Um, again, we're talking about how to move, how to travel while in uh, Medellin in particular. But what we're talking about here uh, applies to any country that you go to third world, second world or first world. It doesn't matter. All these, you know, all these techniques and everything we're going to discuss here today um, applies to any, even when you're traveling around in America, especially when you're traveling around in America. So uh, so <laughs> let's just go ahead and continue. Yep, Tinder. We've all seen, you know, like the Tinder swindler and all that stuff like that. But it, yeah, it started on Tinder. I had connected with a lady and, you know, we're messaging for a bit. And she's like, hey, you know, let's hang out. I'm like, okay, right? This was, you know, guys, you know, you'll meet somebody online. Uh, you message for a bit. Hey, let's meet. And she's like, you know what? Hey, is it cool if my friend comes? Sure, right? Bring your friend. I have no problem. So, Perry, should he have a problem with that? <laughs> yeah, he's got a huge problem. One, he doesn't know what he's doing. Mistake number two: you you're in a country where you don't know the girl that you're even talking to, and then you're going to tell her to bring a friend who you don't know either. You're setting yourself up for a problem. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what he was thinking. Well, I know what he was thinking. He thought he was going to get a menage a trois, but that's what he wanted. But he what he got was what they had in plan. So I don't know. You don't even know the first girl. So you okay her to bring another girl? that you don't know. I was telling you earlier, I had a friend who went to Medellin for his birthday. He almost had the exact same situation. He didn't know the first girl, she brought a second girl and they robbed him. I said, what would you think was gonna happen? I thought they was gonna, you know, they all do me and yeah, they did, they did you, did you in. Right, they got that booty. It wasn't the way you thought it was gonna go down, right. but they got that booty. Now, so if, okay, let's say you're a guy in a situation um, you're going to go to some country. You did meet somebody on Tinder. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. But if you were to do that, what steps would you take? Well, first, I would have went only in somewhere in a public spot because I want to, I want people to be around us. And de definitely you don't leave your drink, which is what he's going to get forward to. He left his drink and he think his drink got spiked. But you don't need to do that. I don't even drink. So it, don't, it will never happen to me because I don't drink. Unless you're going to spike a Coca-Cola and that's coming with me. Uh, and then he left his drink along with the two women. I mean, he did so many things that, that goes against the code. But and if you wanted a menage a trois, there's places he could have went to energy, new light, picked out two in the back room and did his thing. You could have did that for any hour of the day here. That, that That's not a big deal. But not with people in this particular setting that you don't know. That don't make any sense. Yeah, yeah I hear that. You know what I mean? And, so, and then I'll add to what Perry was saying. If you are going to use... American game. Let's just call it um, American dating game procedures when trying to date internationally. Okay. We'll play it all the way out. You know what I mean? And, you know, like you, if you're in America and you're not getting three ways, you're not getting, you know what I mean? Getting women like that in America on the first encounter, why would you expect it to happen somewhere else and it not be a setup? So, so if I'm going to meet a woman on Tinder and I'm going to go, meet them in their country. In this case, we're talking about, you know, Colombia. I'm going to go take her out a few times, right? I'm going to get to know her. I'm going I'm to I'm use the American uh, technique, even right. though I'm in a separate country, because I, I got to get to know this woman. Like, it's like Perry said, you don't know her. And it's like, I want to bring my friend. No, I wouldn't let you bring your friend on a date if we're meeting in America. If, if we're going on a date in Tampa, I meet a dime on Tinder or whatever, Bumble or whatever app. And then I, we, we're going to go out and she's like, oh, can I bring my friend? No, nah, you can't bring your friend. So that's the thing. You know what I mean? You got to be smart. So, yeah. But if you're going someplace like Colombia, if you're going to the Philippines, if you're going to Thailand, you don't need the app to help you source women. You, you know, just have to walk around. All you got to do is breathe. If you can breathe, you can find somebody. You can find somebody. Now, having <laughs> said that. Can't breathe because I've seen people actually get passed out in the Del Rey. <laughs> <And> they still, <laughs> right, <laughs> take them out on the stretcher. <laughs> he still had a woman. I'm like, shit. <laughs> now, man, here's the thing, though. There are guys who who have no game in this country or any other country. There, there are guys who just don't know how to approach women. Mm -hmm. um, they're more comfortable having a computer as a, uh, as an interfa interface. Um, so, you know, this is just this is how they move. 
Uh, for those guys, I say you got to get your confidence up. You got to get your game up. You, there is no substitution. There's no substitute. There's no cheat code for human interaction, man. You, you have to know how to socialize and, if you're and, trying to go someplace. And the sad part about it, you don't really even need game. If you could walk in the park and, and park of Legere's, there's going to be five, 600 girls hollering at you there. All you got to do is breathe and walk. I mean, why would he need to think he needed to go to tender is a whole nother issue. Right. So, yeah, that's just something we wanted to throw out there for you guys. Uh, and periodically, I'm going to go and check out the chats to see who, if anybody's writing anything in the chats. But we're going to continue with uh, we're going to continue with the video. Uh, we met, hung out for a bit. And next, you know, like, hey, you know what? You know, let's you know go back to my place. Cool. That's what we do. And uh, like I said, we're, we're hanging out there. Um, I'm thinking it's, you know, kind of cool, fun games, but it's not all fun and games. Uh, Colombia is full of sharks. Brother, Tobias, you were thinking you were about to get the three-way. Let's keep it 100, bro. And I ain't mad at you because I've been thinking the same thing. That's exactly what he was thinking. He was thinking he was going to get a three-way with two chicks he don't know in a country he's not that familiar with, but he, but he thinks it's cool. So, you know. He rolled the dice and it came up crap. Came up crap. Ain't nothing wrong with that though. I ain't mad at you for uh, a for effort, my friend. A for effort, but we'll continue. <laughs> right, big, big sharks. Now I gotta say, the Colombian people have treated me extremely well. Like really, really warm, really hospitable people. I gotta say it. Um, I just ran into you know those people. And, you know, I paid for it so I can take nothing away from, you know, Colombia. Uh, like they have treated me well. Uh, I'm a Spanish speaker also. So actually being able to speak the language has really, really helped in solving my problem. So listen, y'all. Y'all want to hear the extent to my Spanish? You want to hear my Spanish? Hola, como estas? Se habla inglés? No? Poquito? See? Great. That's it. That's my Spanish right there, bro. That's it. Outside of that, I'm stuck. You don't even need to be able to speak the language. He's, he is a native speaker. And, and to his point, when he said the Colombian people treat him well, of course they do. They make a lot of money off of tourism. They make a shit ton of money off of tourism. But, and, and the funny thing is, he speaks Spanish. And, but, he didn't, but speaking Spanish has no substitute for common sense. So what's they mm. got to do with anything? You speak the language, but you don't know the rules. If you knew the rules, you wouldn't have been on Tinder. If you speak Spanish, you could have went up in the park and anybody you wanted. So what you could have went into McDonald's, went into the it's park. Remember that? Uh, remember the teller? Remember we was at the uh, in the bank, in the bank teller? Yeah, money exchange, girls, anybody. Yeah, uh, police. The police <laughs> women are beautiful down there, y'all. Anybody. So you speak the language, but you on Tinder? That makes no sense. Makes yeah, we got to beat you up on that one, brother. I'm sorry. That was that was a bad move. We just got to beat you up on that one. But, you know, like I said, you learn from it. And uh, you speak Spanish, bro. I can Next time you go to Colombia, hit me up. I'll go with you. <laughs> For real. I can utilize that talent. Hey, okay. You speak Spanish, but you on Tinder? Okay. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> but I meet these ladies. Uh, we're hanging out. We decide to, you know, return back to my place. And they're like, hey, you know, cause I didn't have any uh, anything to drink at my place. So like, hey, you know, let's just pretty much, you know, door dash uh, some drinks to my place. How are you not prepared? You know, you're going to be bringing and, you know, chicks back to the crib. Why, why yeah, stop at the corner store and get something and now, set the place up? I messed up. <laughs> Me, not anyone else. I have to take ownership of this. And I, and I do. I, you know, I open my beer and I set it down on the counter. Dummy, hundred percent, just dumb move. Go ahead and laugh because you're like, oh man, you set yourself up. So I go to the restroom. I come out. I grab my beer, and it was my first time ever drinking this, you know, this brand of beer. So I take take a swig. Yeah, oh, okay, that tastes interesting. That I'm like, oh okay, uh, yeah, maybe it's supposed to taste like that. It was kind of sweet or something. Um. When I went to the restroom is when I believe my drink was spiked. And, you know, this is not new. This has happened to, you know, a lot of people, right? All right, bro. 
right, all right, bro. All right, all right. Okay, so like I said, first of all, why haven't you planned this out? Like you over here, your plan is to holler at some women, right? You talking to this girl on Tinder, you had every intention of, get, of taking her out, you know, hopefully having a couple of drinks with her, bringing her back to your spot. Why wasn't the spot ready? Why don't you have beer, water, wine, you know what I mean? Uh, hard liquor if you drink liquor, you know what I mean? If you a weed smoker or whatever, if you, whatever you do, why didn't you have all that at the crib already? Because you can get all that. You want your Viagra? Go right down to the drugstore and buy you some in Columbia. It ain't like here. You can get whatever you need at the drugstore. You know what I mean? Come back, have your ice, your cups, everything set up because you know you're going to bring someone home. Right. That's just, that was his whole, well, he's trying to bring two people home. That was his whole plan. But he just, well, he didn't prepare right. He didn't think it out. And, you know, I tell a story one time. I was with a friend, and I won't mention his name. Uh, it's not you, Don. But I was with a friend. <laughs> and we were in an in a establishment called um, Energy. And he said, Perry, let me speak, tell me the rules. I said, well, the rules are here. They're going to come out with little numbers. You pick whatever you want and do whatever you got to do. He said, okay, 3, 13, and 38. <laughs> and he went on and did his thing. And you don't have to go to Tinder. You don't have to somebody bring a friend you didn't even know what the friend looked like you didn't know who the friend was you knew nothing this whole thing was a was a, a, a disaster from the get-go from the get-go and then in in these women as the story progress it unfolds and they you know they talk he talks about what happened these women didn't sound um experienced in hitting licks like this it, this didn't sound like this is what they do no. it sounded more like they just kind of stumble onto this lick. It's like, oh, well, it's here. Mm -hmm. So, and this is one of the things I tell folks, man, if if you go somewhere outside of your home, anywhere, you go down the street in your town, if you go to the next town over, if you go to another country, wherever, if you move like a victim, people going to look at you as food, period. I remember when I first started coming to Medellin, one of the rules were don't wear shorts. And one of the reasons it's called shorts stand out. It says, one, you're an American. Two, you're not from here because nobody in Medellin other than women wear shorts. Men don't wear shorts. Three, when you wear shorts, your pockets are loose. So, you know, I see a lot of Americans coming over here with your shorts on. Then they say, well, they robbed me. He went in my pocket. Well, your pockets are hanging out. You got on shorts. Your shorts hanging off your ass. That's what's going to happen to you. You know, it, they don't follow the rules. They just they go from one country and think the same rules apply in Colombia as they apply in Dominican. And they don't, they're not the same people. They're not the same, they don't move the same. And 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 a lot of the people that come over here don't move that well at home. So they bring no game to here and they get robbed. That's what happens. That's an excellent point right there, y'all. I hear that. There are rules to where you're going. If you go back to the couple episodes with Rook, Rook Rook's always talking about traveling. Like, yeah, when Rook comes on, we're talking about ancient history, but he talks about traveling. And he was like, you need to know something about the place that you intend to go to. Mm -hmm. You need to know how they move. How do they dress? What are, they, what are their local customs? What do they do? Right? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it cool to shake hands in that country? Or is it more customary to, to make the kissy sound on the cheeks? You know what I mean? You need to know these things. Right. So, and if you don't, it's, you stand out. When I go to Colombia... And I'll say this and then we'll continue. The one thing I love about being in Columbia is it's a very basic thing. And it took me a, a bunch of trips before I figured it out. When I'm walking around Columbia, I'm not a, the scary black dude, right? Mm. I'm, I'm not the black American guy. I'm not the N-word. I'm not that. I'm just another human. People come up to me speaking Spanish. They think I'm from, from Panama. They think I might be, you know, from Cuba. I might be from the Dominican Republic. There's a lot of blacks in Cartagena. Like the African ship went to Cartagena before they came to America. Yep. So they got out of them. They look just like us. Until you yep. open your mouth, they don't know where you're from. They don't know where you're from. So I, I don't really say a lot in public. I walk around, I make eye contact, I nod and all that kind of stuff, but I try not to speak because that'll give me away right off the rip. It's still not a bad thing. But but the point being, you know, I blend in. And the people treat me as I am one of them. So I don't walk around with the police. Don't follow me around. People don't walk around the stores behind me. None of that. I'm like, oh, this is how white folks feel in America. This is great. <laughs> this is a great feeling. But uh, we'll, we'll continue. Men and women. So, you know, women say, oh, it's the date rape drug. It happens to men to uh, possibly not in the United States as much, but abroad. It's happened to servicemen for years and you know a lot of times those stories just don't get back 
to the civilian world, but other servicemen know these stories and they know them very, very well. And Tobias, I got to push back a little bit, man. I'm, I'm a paratrooper. I'm airborne. I've been around the world. My travels began in the United States Army. Yes, there were guys who were out there getting fleeced because they were stupid. They were stupid sailors, Marines, you know, soldiers. They were dumb, like dumb. And here's the thing. When you're in the United States military, you look like a soldier. You got the high and tight. Your clothes don't fit right. You look like a soldier. They know the base is there. There are people who want to try to get money from you. There are people who want to try to get with you. There are people that want to kill you. Because you are an American soldier and they get points for that. So those people that get caught up, I don't feel bad for them because they kind of did what you did, brother. They went into a situation blind and got caught up. Great. So yeah, we're gonna, we gonna continue. So uh, again, I left my drink, I came back, I take a swig. Uh, we're talking a little bit more, right? And you know, we're laughing, right? It was, I'm thinking everything is actually cool now i just happen to wake up the very next morning and i'm like whoa what happened right honestly i don't know i don't remember a thing i wake up my clothes are off I don't know how that happened because I, I was wearing a burgundy shirt, a burgundy button down shirt, black pants and my shoes. I was fully dressed. Yo, he might have got his three way. P just don't remember it. <laughs> he, he got something. He was the three way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things he did so wrong. I mean, he, he went on his date with, with a girl who knew was bringing another girl. He left his computers out, as you'll get to in a second. He left all his goods out. Why didn't he put his stuff in the safe? If you're going to bring them back to your house, what do you think? You don't know these people. You don't know neither one of these girls. But you didn't utilize the, the, you didn't utilize the things to protect yourself. So you got you got got. That's what happened. You got got. And I got a story for that, too. Uh, just want to catch up with the chat. Han, brother, Han, 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 Han is in the house. What's good? The best way to stay safe is get the strap. Uh yeah, bro. I, I know a lot of guys who uh, had the strap got shot up and uh, the police found them with that strap in their hand. You know what I mean? You you can have weapons and stuff like that, bro. But, it, you know, if you're in a foreign land on your own, like he's down there by himself. Gun, no gun. It doesn't matter if I move with a team. I like to move like, you know, like the, the, the Navy SEALs or the Green Berets. I move with my team. I don't move like James Bond because what happens to James Bond? He always gets captured. <laughs> right? You want to be with your team. So, uh, so yeah, man, that gun thing, uh, especially down in, 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 in Columbia, yeah, you could probably find, you could probably get yourself a strap, but what if you have to use it? Do you, are you prepared to deal with the ramifications behind that? Yeah. Spend the rest of your life in a Colombian prison? I don't think so. Right. And who, and what if you accidentally, accidentally shoot the wrong person? The cartelis are down there, bro. You accidentally hit one of their people or somebody they care about. They coming to see you. <laughs> they coming to see you. So now, nah, man, I, I nah, I, that's y'all know. Lord knows, y'all know I like to bring my weapons. I stay armed. Y'all know I stay armed. It's always right next to me. But I wouldn't. I'm not armed when I'm down in Columbia. You know. I don't even think about it. You know what I mean? And then, brother Mike, uh, you need a game plan. Absolutely, you need a game plan. You need to stick to your game plan. You know what I mean? That's absolutely true. Pre-game before you go out, absolutely. And again, all this applies here in the states. Mm -hmm. it, it it applies in the states. So um, that is what it is. <laughs> That's so funny, though, bro. <laughs> like, I don't get it, but here we go. Up until some point, and I ended up in my bed. I woke up. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm crawling, and I'm like, okay, where's my wallet? I look at my wallet. My wallet is empty, right? And I usually, I just keep a little thin wallet for credit cards, and credit cards are gone. I'm like, uh-oh. I've been drugged and I've been robbed. So uh, I tried to stand up right the, with the best I could because I was hazy as can be. And uh, yeah, and we'll 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 pause it right there, man. As a matter of fact, it's because he I mean he tells a good story, y'all. I'll pin it to the bottom. Um, his you know like the uh, the link. Uh, I'll pin it to the bottom uh, for the for the uh, replay. Um, but. 
you know, the, the, the thing is this. You know what I mean? Like, he did so many things wrong. And we don't have to play the whole thing, but we'll, t- we'll kind of talk about it. So the one thing that saved him, he was in a, a more up-class uh, place. Sounds to me like he airbnb and and um, he goes on to tell you about the protocols that they have in some of these buildings. And Perry, did you want to touch on that a little bit, how, like, like the sign-in process and all that? Generally, what happens if you're in a hotel or not necessarily an Airbnb, because it depends on which one you have, but if you're in a hotel... The person has to come in, show their ID, sign in, and then you have to okay them to come to the room or go downstairs with them. So they kind of know who's in your room. They take a picture of their ID. If something goes wrong, everybody knows where to find them. That's why I like hotels a little better than depends on which Airbnb. He, I think he was probably in a place like Energy, which is a apartment complex where some of the tenants there rent out their Airbnb or some other place similar to that. And the front desk did not let the person leave without, according to what he's saying, without him okaying it. So they stopped him leaving and eventually called the police and that type of thing. That's the only thing that saved him. According to his story, though, the police came and then the police stole from him. So, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, police came in. They, the, uh, well, they took the computer and took his cash. Yeah, the police took his cash and a computer or something. So he had all kind of problems, you know. But still, I don't understand why his cash wasn't in the uh, safe. His computer should have been somewhere locked up. I mean, if you invite him back to his hotel, while well, you got two computers hanging out there. I mean, none of this makes much sense. I mean, he had a lot of mistakes that he made. And they're rookie mistakes with somebody who travels as much as I think he does. Why would you make those type of mistakes? Yeah, those are huge mistakes. And, and, and it could be chalked up to the bubbles you move in. Like, you know what I mean? The way, you know, Perry and I are from the same neighborhood uh, in the same town. Like, Cincinnati is a small place, but... It is lethal. I'm just gonna keep it 100. Like Cincinnati, for, for such a small town, like you can get caught up quick. And we came up in an era where, you know, I know what it sounds like to hear somebody get hit in the head with a bat. I know what it sounds like to see somebody get shot. You know what I mean? I, hey, Perry, first time I had a gun in my face, man. It was uh Miss Burton, there, man. I was on uh I was right in front of Hirsch, right there on a uh, Red Road in Goshen. Yeah, a pistol in my face. First up, I had one was by my mama, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> that's a whole nother. <laughs> the only time I had one was by my mama. <laughs> but the but the the point being, we come from a bubble where like we're we are aware of hyper violence and we know what can happen. So we're always our our senses are heightened, always, no matter where we are. And I tell people that all the time. You know, I, I got a. Uh, guy who used to come with us, we had to throw him out of the group because he didn't know how to roll. He just wouldn't listen. He came down here, and he's inviting girls off the street. He don't know who they are. And I'm like, what are you doing, fool? You know, you go in this room, he, you know, there's people all over. He, I don't somebody took this. Why would you invite people into your room? You don't even do that in Cincinnati. Why would you do that down here, you know? And it's just amazing that people bring these these idiotic thoughts, you know, like, I'm an American, and, I, and, I, and they don't care about where you're from. They don't care about American dollars. You can't buy nothing with American dollars down here. They want you to convert everything to their money. Right. And and so people just come here with this, you know, so America is the greatest, and no one really cares about America down here. Just roll with how you're supposed to roll, and you have a great time. Right. And I'll tell you about the time that I did the dumbest move I ever made in Columbia. Um, it was one of the trips. I got there before the team. Uh, Perry and the crew was scheduled to get in the following morning. You know, and at the time I was living in Cali, so it just worked out. From I just got there, you know, like maybe eight to twelve hours before they did. So I get there again. You know, I, I was standing at Hotel Diaz, and um, I went out just to kind of walk around. I was still fairly new. I knew Le- Parker Legere's, but I just like you know what? I'm just gonna go out by myself. You know what I mean? The fellas don't get here till tomorrow, so I went out. And I think I told you about this period. I went out, and I was in one of the clubs, and I and I see this is two women and a guy. And the woman was, her body was a 10. You know what I mean? And I mean, in my opinion, she was absolutely beautiful. I, w- I would absolutely give her, I would give her eight and a half, nine. You know what I mean? I mean, she I mean, she didn't wear any makeup, just naturally beautiful, fit, really cool personality. So I, I approached my bad Spanish, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she speaks English. And I was, you know, I'm like, hey, let me buy you a drink. You're cool. She like, she turns to me and she says, um, where's your hotel? And I'm like, oh, I'm staying at Hotel Diaz. She was like, okay. Um, and look, the women down there, especially back then, 
there were like two types of women. There were women who were just out there working, doing their thing, and then there were women who were in what we called the game. They were just about that life. Like, you know what? They just they 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 look good. They go out there. I guess you can call it prostitution, but I don't know. They were just open to it. They it wasn't they had to like you once they once they got to know you, they were like, look, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have sex, but I gotta get something out of it. I got family to feed, I got this whatever, whatever. So it is what it is. So she had a job and she was like, Look, I like you. I wanna she's like, I wanna sleep with you. Right. And my job, by this time, I'm like six or seven in. I've been out and about, I'm drunk. Um, but I'm you know, I, I hold my I hold my liquor well. I'm like, all right, cool. She walks back, she tells her friends I'm about to go. She tells a girl, like, she gives her girl to um, she told the girl, um, I'm going, I'll I'll talk to you later. I'm going with him. He's at the hotel Diaz, whatever. So she cause just she wanted her girl to know where she was going. We go up there, I get to the hotel. You know what I mean? She told me, you know, what she was hoping to get from me. Uh, monetarily whatever I'm like here no problem Man She phew, These guys we talking about blowing you know blowing Women's backs out man she blew my back out This woman man Bro it was it was top Three best sexual experience I ever had in my life top three Mind you I've been drinking y'all I was out of it so I mean by the third pop I passed out sleep Sleeping now here's the thing I wake up in the morning I'm feeling good, sun's shining, and I look around, she's gone. And I'm like, damn, I left my safe open. Mm. I didn't even think about it. I came in, I just, I left my safe open. There must have been about $1,500 cash in there. Um, I had my watch in there, passport was in there. Um, and then, like, uh, my device, you know, iPad or whatever type device was in there. And I, I looked around. I didn't see her. I just started laughing because I'm like, Psh, dummy, boy, you stupid. You know better. But guess what? I found a note on the on the dresser saying she had the time of her life. She thought I was an amazing guy. Right. She only took what we agreed. I left for her. She took that and she wanted to see me again. I went over to my safe. Everything's in there. Mm-hmm. Everything in there. I got lucky. Tobias yeah. got unlucky. That's what happened. And, you know, when I tell people about Columbia, I said, you got to understand this. They have the prettiest. I've been I've been basically every place I wanted to go. I've already been. So I think they got the prettiest woman I've ever seen. When I went to Panama, the prettiest woman were Colombians. I went to Aruba, the prettiest woman were Colombians. I went to Costa Rica, the prettiest woman was with Colombians. So I said, I came to Colombia. They're the prettiest women you're going to probably ever see. They're the greatest liars that you're going to ever see in this world. There's no such thing as limits to what they lie will go to. The greatest liars. The greatest. They will lie like I have never seen in my life. I had a girl, I laugh at her because she, she still calls me to this day. She sent me a cancer patient's um, diagnosis and treatment history saying she had cancer and she was dying. So I'm looking at this. I said, the only problem with this this document is your name is not on here. And I said, every doctor, I know, write your name on here somewhere. Your name has got to be here. It's for you. She said, well, I didn't send you the first page. I said, well, no, you didn't send the first page because it's not you. The last line, it said age 34. You're 24. (laughs) So I said, whoever this 34-year-old woman is, yes, she has cancer, but it's not you. She went so far to get to off the internet, somebody's cancer diagnosed, somebody's treatments, and send it to me and say, could you send me some money? <laughs> I said, this is amazing. There's no limit to how far they'll go with lies. And so guys have to understand it. Yeah, they're beautiful. And they're going to act like they love you. And they're going to act like you're the greatest in the world. Don't get caught up, get caught up in the hype because they will lie. And they'll have a boyfriend on the side. I had a friend of mine, I think I might have told you this. He's from Cali like you. He was going to Costa Rica. He met this girl and he said, oh my gosh, she's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. He's taking her to the church, taking her to dinner. And she's got a her brother with her. So they brother going to dinner, going to church with her. He kissing her. Come to find out the brother was her boyfriend. He was just there overseeing the whole thing. She was taking, he was taking her and her man out on dates. Big pimp and spending G's. Uh, <laughs> church together the, he the whole her. time. Yeah, and it was her man. And she told him eventually, that's my man. He's wanted to make sure there wasn't really going on. He just wanted to see what kind of money we was going to get. But it's cool. You can still get this. You can get this Foxy Brown, baby. It's cool. No, he, he was knocking it out. But wow. Oh, can it? Because they, they, they wasn't making any money. The men don't really make any money in these countries. The women do. So the man was saying, okay, as long as you knock him off and he pay him, I ain't got no problem. Bring the money home. 
And that's what she was doing. Wow. Yo. Oh, this Dunson's in the house. My cousin's up in here. I see you. Oh, what's good? We got three Avondale dudes up in here, man. Something finna happen, y'all. I'm in the building, cuz. Loving the show. Thank you, cuz. Oh, I appreciate it. And y'all know my cousin uh, is an amazing artist. Uh, I'm working on an intro for my, for this show and all that. He's going to be the one doing that for me. Um, you know, much love to Cuzzo, man. You know, we got Perry up in here. And uh, shoot. Hey, oh, man, hit your sister. Tell Renee to, check, to jump in real quick. You know what I mean? And, and shoot us a shout out. I ain't talked to I ain't talked to Renee in a minute. But Perry, what what's your take on that, bro? Like, cause, you know, uh, the American mindset or the Western mindset is, uh, shame on you for using your body to get money to get access to secure resources. You're you're a bad woman. What what's your take on that? Well, I mean, it's been done all over the world for since day one. You know, I mean, that American women do it. They do it in a different way. I've never seen an American woman who say, "Hey, I'm fine. I'm just gonna give it up. You gotta you gonna take me out. I might need help here. I might need help here." It's the same principle. The only difference is they got a better foundation because they may have a job that pays. Here, they don't have a job that pays. So the choices they have here is, do you want to make $200, $200, $300 a month and starve? Or you want to use what you can to get it to better your condition? And if the situation was reversed, if they had minimum wage at a 92 cent in America, they'd be doing the same thing, even more. I mean, they kind of do it in now though, right? Like if you go to places like New York, Miami, LA, Oh yeah. Don't, yeah, they tricking to get on them boats. You know what I mean? They, Bands they, to make her dance, right? They doing their thing. You know, you go in them clubs, they doing them things in there. I mean, it's just a question of uh, morality. And here, the morality is a little different. You know, uh, energy, Parker Lagerias, all new life, Gusto's, Fazio, those, all those places are legal. So they don't look down on that. I mean, they, they just say, hey, we got to survive. We got I went to a lawyer's office one time. I think I might have told you, beautiful lawyer. And I'm talking to her, you know, legally. I'm saying, look, hey, 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 you know, how's the law work? You know, what? Because I do a lot of car accident cases. How does it work over here? She says, well, we don't do like you do. It doesn't it's not a lot of money? Maybe a thousand dollars. Blah blah blah. She looked at me about at about ten minutes later. She said, are we fucking? <laughs> I said, no. <"Lord." laughs> so yo, you trying to run that professional game? Like, yo, baby, I got it going. I was like, no, I think I got a blush. I was like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and she broke down. And she said, look, I make $800 a month on a good month. That's my best month this year so far, $800. I said, I wanted to say, baby, I made that about an hour ago, you know? <laughs> well, okay. And, but that, and she said, look, so I'm in, you know, if we can do something, you can help me, I appreciate it. I mean, but she just said, hey, the doctors don't make any money. Lawyers don't make any money. I had a, a friend of mine that I'm real tight with now. He does my commercials or my, my law commercials for me. She said, she's a nurse. She said, I make more money from TikTok than I did as a nurse working in the hospital here. And I thought that was amazing. I said, in America, you be making six figures. She said, I am making six figures, $6.36. So it's, wow. just a, it's a different ball game, you know? So, and let me ask you this, because I mean, because there's a part of the internet out there now that I'm pretty sure you have no idea about this. I'm, I'm about to, you know, put you on a little bit of game out here. Um, it's called the manosphere. Mm-hmm. And it's referred to as a uh, red pill or RP content, which means it's a reference to the movie Matrix. Right. Um, you know, you unplug, you understand what's going on. Now, the manosphere basically teaches uh, young men, old men, men in general, uh, female nature and female nature when it comes to like female dating strategies. Right. So in America or in the West, you know, you always have, you know, this conversation about traditional women traditional men um what the roles are this sort of thing right and then you have feminists who are like i don't need no man i don't need this you know i could do it all on my own and you got all this kind of stuff uh i don't want a man to lead me it's a 50 50 relationship uh 50 50 meaning there is no leader i do what i want you know what i mean whatever so like perry you've always been a g when it came to this sort of thing when it came to relationships you you have always understood what's going on you understand human nature female male all of it so what's your take on today's dating market the dating scene do you think getting married in the west is a good idea or a bad idea stuff like that you know it really depends on each individual you know some people think that 
the old traditional ways of marriage is great. And for them, it may be great. Uh, I do a lot of divorces for people who think like that. So it, it just depends now. You know, my rule was, well, my father's rules, which I guess I kind of adapted, was those who make the money make the rules. So I have a hard time with somebody making rules for me who don't make any money, who ain't contributing to the household. So, and it, you know, that's just the way I am. I mean, if I'm making, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars and you making 40, uh, you're not making a whole lot of rules because you ain't making a whole lot of money. Just contribute paying for this house, to paying for this car, it's paying, you ain't doing, you know. And so you're trying to tell me that there's a $400,000 difference in income and because we fucking, we even, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, it's just. Okay. So, so who, he or she who makes the money makes the rules. That's that's generally how it is. It's kind of hard, even though man sometimes now, since women are making a lot more money than they used to, they have a hard time adapting to that theory. Uh, but if I was if I was a woman and I'm making four hundred thousand, you making forty, uh, I don't know if I need a forty thousand dollar man to be telling me what to do when he can't tell he can't figure out what to do with himself to make more than forty. So it it just depends on how you look at life, you know. I don't I mean I've been single a while now. I just I'm enjoying my life. So I, the way I look at it, once you get past a certain age, you in the back nine. I'm, you do whatever you you have to do to make you happy. Because right. ain't no, ain't no, you can't do it again, and ain't nobody gonna feel sorry for you when it's over. So right, right. I'm, and I I was on. I do a couple of shows. I I'm, I'm fortunate enough that people invite me on their platforms and they'll ask me stuff because people look at me and they're like, oh, you know, you know, DL saying he's part of that red pill world, red pill community. And I'm like, uh, to an extent. You know what I mean? Yes, I agree with a lot of stuff that a lot of the tenants. But one of the things they always ask, they're always asking me, what are you looking for? What do you want out of a relationship? I'm like, I ain't looking for nothing. Like, my mission is to take care of my daughter. Like, that's what I'm doing now. And then once she is sorted out, I'm good. So Because people are like, well, don't you want this and don't you want that? I'm like, look, man, I got about 30, 35 years, hopefully good years left. I'm just not trying to squander that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the back nine. You know, we can't we, ain't, we can't afford to make the mistakes you made at twenty. You know, and I, I tell my son, you know, and all the people I know at that age group, I said the only time you're going to really find, in my opinion, pure pure love is when you're in college, because once you get out of college and you start making money, it changes the dynamics of the relationship. It changes the dynamics of how people look at you. People look at me the same who grew up with me. But people who don't know me look at me as Perry the attorney. Other people look at me as, oh, you live on South Crescent. You I went to, you went to Burton, you went to Crest Hills, you went to Central. But once you get out of college and money starts coming involved, it's a whole different dynamic. You know, I mean I've walked in places in LA that people I rep you know, with with, you know, certain entertainers, and people look at you totally different. They don't even know you. So money just kind of changes the perception of how people look at you and how you handle yourself. So, and you've never had a problem with uh, dating women. You've never, you've, you've never had a problem with, with, you know, with like intimate access. Like we call it like getting that Foxy Brown. Like you've always had game in that sense. Going back how far? Like, you, have you been that way since you were like a teenager? I, I think because really, I think so. My father, you know, I saw my dad, and you know, I don't think you might know who my dad is, but a lot, a lot of I'm sure they don't. My dad was the head of the numbers racket in Cincinnati. And he was dating the Sarah Vons and they were going out, you know, and everybody like that. So it was just, those are the people I saw. They all had suits on, they all had game, they all, you know. So it was just, you know, that's how it went. And so I never really had an issue. I've always had, I've been lucky with women. Let's put it like that. Yeah, you, you, so you, you're, you're of true gangsters. You know what I mean? I'm of the street gangster types. Yeah. But you're of like the, the, you know what I mean? Like the high tier, top tier gangsters wearing suits and all that, running numbers. That's organized crime. That's wow. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. Well, you so, know, I, I just had a guy call me last. You know, I wrote three books on my dad. And a guy called me from Chicago and wanted to write another book about how, you know, they were tired in Chicago. And I didn't know they were tired in Chicago. I knew they were tired in New York. But so I said, I don't care. You know, I'll interview for the book. But yeah, they were, they were totally different type of gangs. So they was going to Costa Rica in the 50s on jet. Damn. You know, so they were Damn, going, in the 50s. I tell people all the time. I remember my first trip to New York. And uh, my dad was friends with Bumpy Johnson. Frank Lucas was the driver. That was my babysitter. Wow. So, you know, yeah, it was a totally different type of gangster back then. You know. Wow. You know, that's going to be a whole other show. We're going to have to do that separate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the gangster edition. Get Perry in here. Talk about that. But so, so like the Manosphere, like that, that part of the YouTube 
uh, world, there are a lot of men out there, right? So there's there's a there's a theory out there, um, and it's, it's almost an accepted belief amongst the manosphere that women only are attracted to and will only pursue the top twenty percent of men, and the bottom eighty get little to no uh, sexual or intimate access. No Foxy Brown for them. Uh, would you agree with that? I mean, it, it depends, and it depends on where they are. You know, the same action that you get in Cincinnati is not the same action you might get in L.A. I think the problem that most men have is they stay in their own range. You know, they don't go outside their, what their, com- their comfort zone. I mean, I got people in Cincinnati who's never left Cincinnati. Yeah. They've never left. They think going to Gatlinburg is a vacation. Wow. The same money you spend going to Gatlinburg, you can go to Panama. And the, and the type of women who like you in Panama is totally different than the type of women you're going to see in Cincinnati. So you never know what you can get until you get out. You know, my mother used to tell me there's somebody for everybody, but they might be on the other side of the world. So get your ass out there and look. So and that's what I did because you just never know. OK, so you wouldn't commit to the they call it the 80 20 rule. You, you wouldn't necessarily commit to that rule, but you would. Would you agree that um, women want the best man that they can get? I think everybody wants the best that they can get. The question becomes what you think is your best. You know, if you think your best is somebody who, you know, from from the hood, then that's fine. If you think you can get somebody better, then get it. Everybody wants somebody better. Uh, women tend to want to marry somebody who makes more money than them. Men tend to want to marry somebody who makes them happy. That's a little different. And so when you come time, when see the problem that women have now is the law has changed in divorces. So now they, they're looking to, they're making more money. So now they got to pay alimony. So now they got to pay uh, spousal support. Now they got to pay, give up half their pension. So it's, it's a little different than how that's changed, you know, because yeah, you wanted, you wanted all these rights and you got all these rights, you got all these jobs, but when it comes to splitting them up, you'd be surprised how hard it is for women to have to write a uh, spousal support check and have to give up some of that pension money. Generally, everybody wants somebody that makes them happy, but women tend to want somebody that makes more money. Yeah, because your take on this is 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 way different. Um, because what I'm hearing, like you're not disagreeing, but you're just saying your experience is a little bit different. So, because a lot of guys, um, get upset, and society as a whole, um, will will get upset with women for uh their hypergamous nature like okay i want to get the best man who can provide security who can who can survive who can provide uh financial resources uh who has the best genes you know i you know i want a man that is bigger than me you know like you know a leader uh do you do you put any credence in that or you think it's just it's just completely jumbled i mean i think it's some credence in that because that's what they were raised to do you know they were raised to find somebody who makes money find somebody who can do who, who can take you to a different stratosphere who can up your ability when like for example uh if i got married my wife becomes mrs attorney perry davis's wife so that changes how people may look at her she was saying still be maybe the same person but she has a totally different you know or when she walks into a room she's a wife of a lawyer she's a wife of this wife of that but you know that is people want to be somebody that can help them in life. That's just generally how it is. Men want somebody to make them happy most of the time. Because once you reach a certain level, uh, I don't need somebody to pay a bill. I don't need you to cook. I don't need you to even clean. You got one job. Make me happy. <laughs> I mean, that's... Okay. You know, I, I got to... Well, you know where I live. You know the cars. Yes. You know the cars. I don't need you to help me get somewhere because I can get there on my own. Right. You're like, I'm already here. You're right. I'm here. You know, I need you to be able to make me happy and I'll make you happy. Now, if you can't do that, that's a different story. And I don't need you. Wow. OK, that's cool. Brother Michael, like the video was good. Miss A.K.A. lady is in the house. Welcome, love. Good to see you. Thanks for coming through. Good evening. Walking into the Frank Lucas was my babysitter. Yeah, yeah, we, we got a real G sitting here. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't be nothing but big dog if you got Frank Lucas as your babysitter growing up now. You know what I mean? Well, uh, driving. Bumpy was friends with my daddy. So, you know, somebody had to watch the kid while they did it. <laughs> <laughs> <Somebody. laughs> yeah, they left that part out the movie, man. We don't have to uh, hit Hollywood up. Like, y'all, y'all left that part out the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, me. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and Brother Michael's in there like, hold on, folks. I'll be right back. He's out there. Miss Globe Girls in the house. What's good? 
my favorite former Navy veterans in the building. What's up? Thanks for coming through here. Uh, meet my, this is my brother right here, Perry Davis Jr., Esquire, you know what I mean? Mystery man, gangster extraordinaire, all that good stuff. You know what I mean? Not that he's a gangster, not just that gangster, that gangster spirit. And uh, and 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 real quick, just a quick side note: growing up like that, that had to help you while building your empire, like building everything you have now. But but having that insight, being around those people, was was that a, a good thing or a bad thing? I think it was it was a good thing because it taught me. Uh, a lot of things, you know, for example, I don't, you know, I've, I've seen just about everybody that I wanted to see in life and meet. And I, I don't think anybody I've ever met, I thought was more important than the people I knew before. And to me, the most important person I ever met was my dad. Second was, was Willard Whitley and, and all them heads of the numbers racket. They were running through more money than I'd ever seen in my life, you know? Wow. So when I saw, you know, I went to lunch or dinner with, with we went to dinner actually with Julius Irving, who I grew up wanting to be Dr. J on the basketball court. It didn't mean nothing to me. You were just Doc, you know, so you wasn't no bigger than my daddy. So it didn't really matter, you know. So I didn't have that. Well, you know, we get it when, like in LA, we're around Renee. It didn't mean nothing to us. It was just, okay, you song songs and let's keep it moving, you know. Let's keep it moving. I've been, I've been in a room with Magic. I've been in a room with Worthy. I've been in a room with like George Clooney. That, and that's part of coming out of Cincinnati. Like, hey, you treat me right. You, you a man like me. I got respect for you. You got respect for me. It, I didn't care about all the other stuff. Right. And, that, and I think that's what it helped me was understand that everybody's just, just people like everybody else. You know, everybody I met in L.A., they wanted to be somebody else. Renee wanted to be a lawyer. He still going to be a lawyer defending his own self. You know, so <laughs> that's a whole other story. You yeah, know? that's a whole, we don't even want, we ain't got time to talk about that, but we'll be on right. this thing till you go home. Right. So <laughs> it was one of those things where it helped me because it gave me the value of, uh, they had a, a, they were different than what you see out here now. They had a, a, a code, you know, they live by a code, and I, and I understood the code, and I respected the code. Uh, I remember when, I don't want to mention his name, but back in the 70s, he wanted to bring a certain drug to Avondale. And they told him, no, take that drug to Dayton. Now, they, they killed Dayton with it, but Lee Cincinnati didn't get killed with it for at least five or six years till it came down. And that's why Heron wasn't such a big thing. That was the last, you know, not till really until I got, at the, the, the 90s is when I st first started seeing Heron. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Well, I don't know. It was a drug. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> It was that they wanted out of the city because, you know, they were doing the numbers and the numbers and the, and the places and the facilities that they had, they were paying off police. And the police would have been a problem for them if they allowed this drug to come and kill the city. And so for, to protect their own money, they said, take it somewhere, else, take it to a city up north. And they did. Damn, P. I didn't know any of this, man, for real. Next time we get together, we got to sit down and talk about this. I, I didn't know, bro. We never had this conversation. So, uh, yeah, wow, I'm going to have to get a Patreon for that because people going to want to be asking questions like, nah, we got to put that behind the paywall. You want that kind of sauce? Yeah, we're going to have to pay for that. TMI Santiago, uh, Santiago Traveler, welcome, brother. Uh, Chubby Chatter, what's good? You saying what's up? I've never seen you before. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. I, I, I absolutely appreciate you spending your time with us. Uh, I'm DL Saint. This is DL Saint. I really want to know podcast. And I'm sitting here talking to one of the original gangsters from the, from the A1, my buddy Perry Davis Jr. Esquire. So back to the... I want to go back to the um, the dating stuff, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to, I asked you all those things because I wanted to get to, I wanted to get to a question. What would you tell these young guys who are, they, they, they haven't developed those skills yet as far as womanizing. They're like, man, I can't get on with any women. Um, I'm a little bit awkward. Uh, I'm not, I'm living at mom's house. I'm 22. I don't really have a future. What would you tell those guys to do? In order to better themselves. And I'll tell you what the manosphere says. The manosphere says work, do the work, make yourself the best version of you, better yourself. And once you do that, women will come. So what, what would you say to that? Well, that's partly true. Um, but that's partly not true because it depends on what your better version is. <laughs> I mean, if your better version still ain't nothing, you got a whole nother problem. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things you can do. You, you've got to understand who you are. That's true. But you also got to understand there's a big world out here. And because somebody may not like you on South Crescent, don't mean they ain't going to like you in Costa Rica. Don't mean they ain't going to like you in Thailand. Don't mean they ain't going to like you in Panama. Don't mean they ain't going to like you in Colombia. This is a big old world. Uh, I would say, what if I had to tell my 22-year-old self, I would just say, keep doing what you're doing and get out. Look, look at the world. 
uh, I looked at the thing yesterday that you can live in Thailand in a high rise for four hundred dollars. I got people living in L.A. paying two and three thousand dollars living in an apartment. Well, why don't you move? <laughs> you live a whole better quality of life. You yeah, know, you say two and three thousand in L.A. They still in the hood. You know what I mean? Right. You in North Hollywood, you spending thirty six hundred. Right. That's what I'm saying. So maybe you should look at how this world really is. And then you could move to a place where they appreciate you a little better. And so you kind of got to get out. You know, I tell people all the time, get out. It's nothing like getting out because that's going to help you grow as a person. It's going to help you see what your true value is. Yeah, you got to work on yourself. Yeah, you got to get get a job. Yeah, you got to get some money. Yeah, you got to do all those things. That's life, no matter where you are. But to, you can do those things and don't get out, and you'll never change your perceptive because your perception because you're still looking at the world of Avondale. And if you're living in Avondale all your life, that's a ten block radius. You're looking at the world. The world's a little bigger than that, you know. Yeah, just a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I mean, I remember the first time I went to uh, France, it was Monday, and I had to have a passport by Friday. And I had never been out of the country. And so Renee said, you know, you know, I represent Renee Moore from Renee and Angela, blah, blah, blah. So Renee said, you got to be on a plane Friday. So I went to the judge and said, look, I got some issues. They got my name wrong. I got to have all this cleared up in three days. Now, luckily, I was a lawyer and knew them. And and I did. I got a passport on Thursday. And I got on a plane on Friday. And I went to France every January for ten years. Wow, making it happen. And uh, brother TMI is in the house. He says I travel to uh, Sosua a lot. Did I pronounce that right? Is that down in Colombia? No, it's the Dominican Republic outside oh, of the- outside of Puerto Plata. Okay, okay, TMI, welcome. I'm, you know what I mean. I'm glad you. You know more more people of color need to travel. You know what I mean? I tell folks all the time, get out there and see what the uh see what the world is like. No, we got bro- yeah, brother Michael's out there hollering at Miss Globe. Look, like you got Miss Globe girl. Shout out to the ladies. Uh, I see you. Holla, 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 I see you. Holla, holla, I see you. Holla, 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 holla. He in here trying to get on. <laughs> He's like holla, 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 holla. Uh, then shout out to Perry and Uncle Uncle Saint. Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Thanks for coming. Um, all right, Perry, I appreciate it, man. We don't. I mean, we got like the last ten minutes or so. Um. And like, do, do y'all go to, he's asking, like, do you know, Perry's been to the DR. I haven't been to the DR, um, but Perry has. Yeah, I went to the DR. I, I, you know, no disrespect to people who like the DR, but once you've been somewhere else, Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia, the DR is Avondale with water. That's what I yeah. tell people all the time. It's Avondale with water. Yeah, because I was in, um, you know, I traveled, I traveled quite a bit, but Perry had me in Aruba, um, and then I was going to the east and I was going to Europe. Uh, I was in uh, the American Virgin Islands a little bit while Perry was doing all these other things. He's doing, you know, he's doing carousel. He's doing, uh, I think, did you do carousel? Did carousel, yeah. Did carousel. He's doing Brazil. You did the DR and then you hit Colombia. Now, we were in Aruba. Costa Rica, Panama, then Colombia. Then Colombia. So, and we were in Aruba. You remember Alex? Mm hmm. And Alex was telling us to go. To Medellin way back when right. Telling us to go And um, shout out to you Alex If you're still around man Cartelli you know what I mean He was doing his thing down there and you know, um, It's closed unfortunately Is it closed? Alex Barr is closed yeah Oh that's too bad man yeah. So um, so yeah So so Perry went to Columbia Came back he was like bro You got this is it I was like well I want to go to Brazil He was like no <laughs> Come here Right Come here. And I remember that first trip we were down there. Uh, we sitting in uh, Lazarus Park. This is day two. I'm like, I had never. It was so insane. I, I, nothing but dimes. Nothing but dimes for me. Day two, I'm taking a break. And Perry sitting there on video phone and one of his dudes who went to Brazil instead of coming with us on that trip. And the guy was trying to get out of Brazil to come meet us in Colombia. He was like, yeah, man, I should have went to Colombia with y'all, man. He down to Brazil. Like, uh-uh. I should have went with y'all. <laughs> but you did have a good time when you were in Brazil, right? I had a. I, I went to Brazil with uh, Diana. You remember Diana? I do remember Diana. Diana was the finest thing I saw in Brazil. So we went back to Colombia. <laughs> so I said, "Let me get out of here. I could have stayed in Colombia, you know." But uh, it, Brazil was okay. It was cool. It was a different vibe. It wasn't as they're not drop. They wasn't drop dead gorgeous like Colombia. But Brazil was cool. It was a different. It was a different vibe. I think I know most Brazilian women I've met, they've had amazing bodies. Um, they don't, you know, there's, there is something about them, their character, their swag that just made them so sexy. That's, that was my thing with Brazilian women. Uh, Colombian women are just drop dead gorgeous. 
Yeah. It just just bottom line. And brother TMI is like, hey, you like uh, Perry? What's your Instagram? Um, so yeah, we'll wrap up, man. If you wanted to throw you, you know, I'll ask you that in a minute when we wrap up. But um, I just wanted to give you a last word, Perry. If you anything you wanted to say about traveling, being safe, uh, anything we talked about, anything you want to bring up? No, I just want you know, I just want people to travel, enjoy their li- enjoy their lives. We only got one life, and then you know, we're gonna check out here sooner or later, more sooner than later. So we need to enjoy every moment. Enjoy this world and have a great time. Just be safe. You know, don't you know, don't go somewhere and not use your common sense. You got to use common sense no matter where you are. But you can have a great time in all these countries and and they're relatively safe. I've been in Colombia twelve years. I've never had one problem with anybody. Uh, but just enjoy life and be safe. So, That's what's up. And where can people find you on social media, man? Do you do that or you don't? My Instagram is a uh, PDJ Lawyer one two three. PDJ Lawyer123 on Instagram. Um, yo, Perry, thank you so much, brother. I mean, we this was an excellent talk. I hope that this talk helps somebody out there. Um, if you are a nerd with no common sense in America and you want to go somewhere, you're going to have to buy you some or borrow some common sense before you go because some of these countries are very, very, very unforgiving when you make a little mistake you might be able to get away with those mistakes in here in america but you will not get away with those mistakes in some other countries no you won't and don't flash money you know i i, I see blacks getting on planes getting in stores here pulling out their wides and flashing money and i'm, I'm watching the locals look at them i, I said they, they've lost their mind you know hey. you, you don't do that on in avondale why you who goes to a store in avondale and takes out a thousand dollars and flashes it so, you know, you, you got to use common sense. And right. even on, they, they're not impressed that you got money. They're impressed that they want to get some of your money. They, they're not impressed with you. You know, they don't, they'll get it one way or another. So you got to control the narrative, you know. And the, the narrative can get you killed. Just be careful, you know. Just be careful. Words of wisdom, words to live by. And if you don't listen to that, there will definitely be words to die by because – just because your hundred dollars gets you four thousand Colombian pesos or whatever, four hundred thousand uh, Colombian pesos or whatever it is, and you walking around with this big wide, to you like, oh, it ain't much money. But to them, oh, it's a lot of money. It's that's a lot, a, it's a lot, a lot of, money. of money. Yeah. What? Well, ask yourself if you saw some dude walking around half drunk, little bitty guy walking around with three hundred thousand dollars. What would you do to that guy? Right. There you go. Food for thought. So. Perry, thank you so much, brother. I mean, this was this was great, man. Wish I was down there with you. You know, I'm still I'm, I'm going to get that passport thing sorted out. Um, it is what it is. Like I said, I, I did what you said, and they're supposed to be sending me uh, the documentation I need so I can take that with me uh, yeah. to get mine, uh, you know, renewed. Um, brother Michael's like, you guys rock. TMI, thanks for being here, brother Michael. Thanks for being here. Miss AK lady, uh, Miss Globe girl. Uh, Han 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 Everybody who showed up Thank you so much For being here My, I'm saying Oh Cuzzo back in Cincinnati Thanks for being here as well um, I'm D.L. Saint This is Perry Davis Jr. This is the D.L. Saint I really want to know cast. Uh, I really want to know podcast I'll holler at y'all later Peace